Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about the moon in astrology. Now, the moon, uh, the moon in astrology, the moon uh, governs the emotions, the emotional needs, uh, can represent the mother, uh, the family, uh, the home, and it is responsive and reactionary. Now, as far as like the moon and the sign, I'll give you an example. I mean, the moon and a sign can show uh, our our emotional needs and, and, and perhaps in maybe a manner in which emotions might be expressed. I mean, moon and Gemini can be like very uh, versatile on an emotional level and can have manifold emotional needs. And expressing variety and versatility can be very exceptionally strong for a moon in Gemini's emotional well-being. Uh, I mean, I should know since I have my moon in Gemini. Now, what's interesting is that the moon is about 400 times closer to the Earth than the sun, but the sun is about 400 times as wide as the moon. So from our perception and vantage point on Earth, they appear to be about the same size. And they may have about the same uh, intensity on, on a person as far as its influence and impact on an astrological chart. You feel a lot of people may say they resonate with their sun more than their moon sign. Then you might have a lot of people saying the opposite, that they resonate more with their moon in contrast to their sun sign. I think a lot of it has to do with what I had explained about the two and their size and distance. So uh, distance from the earth. So anyway, now... The moon in Gemini uh, also, is continuing that example, can be seen as loquacious and talkative, and, and, and being able to express themselves can be part of an emotional need. Now, however, I mean, it's also important to look at the house position of the moon because it can show in what sector or area of life that the moon is being expressed in. Now, Let's say, for example, if somebody has the moon in Gemini in one's first house, this person might uh, talk about uh, them. There might be a strong emotional need to talk about oneself. And that moon in Gemini energy can be seen perhaps very strongly on a first uh, impression. Now, also, um, another example, let's say the moon in Gemini is posited in one's 12th house. Well, this might, the energy of the moon in Gemini might not be seen as strongly, but it can come out perhaps uh, more strongly and more emphasized in the person's private life. And being in the 12th house, it could be, uh, and being the fact that it is Gemini and in the 12th house in this example, that the emotions can be manifold, but yet chaotic at the same time. Now, aspects in the natal chart are also important. Uh, because these energies of the planets can integrate with the uh, with the moon's energy. Now, if it let's say if the moon and uh, the moon has predominantly good aspects, well, this could be indicative of a good rapport and relationship with the mother, uh, with the family, and that the emotional needs can often be met with uh, without exactly an abundance of resistance, very little resistance, generally speaking. Now. Let's say, in contrast to that, let's say that the moon makes predominantly adverse aspects in your chart, then the opposite of this may be true, and you might run into, it could indicate maybe more difficulties with people in your family life, the mother, and also there might be more obstacles, obstructions, and roadblocks in connection with one attaining their emotional needs. And uh, now another thing, as far as an example with some aspects, now let's, or at least one aspect, now let's say if the moon, uh, for example, in your natal chart, uh, makes an adverse aspect to Saturn, let's say it makes a square opposition or even an inconjunct uh, to Saturn. Now, this could be a, a situation where um, the mother and the, and the father in the situation between them may be somewhat contentious and combative. In some cases, it could even indicate a separation or divorce. I've talked to a number of people that have had 
uh, Saturn and an adverse aspect to their moon. And I've heard a number of people be telling me that they've either had their parents were separated, divorced, or the situation uh, was not good uh, between them and that the situation was very contentious and the two were not uh, very compatible. And so anyway, now, uh, let's say, and, and also, and, and, and continue with that aspect example, the moon and adverse aspect to uh, Saturn could also be indicative of a person that might feel often very pessimistic and downcast and often sees perhaps the negative or adverse side of a situation and uh, the person might be feeling often rather despondent or sad. So, another thing too, as far as uh, continuing to talk about the moon in astrology, now let's say uh, talk about an unaspected moon, for example. Now, an unaspected moon can suggest somebody that might feel rather desolate alone as far as their uh, family life uh, goes, their, perhaps even their home and family life goes. Now, it could also be somebody. I mean, keep in mind when you have an unaspected moon, the moon is not really, it, it may not be operating in the way that it, it needs to. And what it is, is it could, this could be somebody that, for example, may overreact emotionally over something trite or trivial or insignificant. But if something devastating or, or traumatic may occur or something that you would think that the, a regular, somebody on average would get more upset about uh, the, this person with the unaspected moon may may take it more with a grain of salt and be more inhibited in ex, in reacting emotionally to something like that. So anyway, uh, and it could also uh, another another thing could be uh, let's take a another um, talk about the moon an intercepted moon. Now an intercepted moon in a natal chart could show very strong vacillation and distortion of energy. Uh, the person may be very emotionally responsive one minute and then emotionally stagnant uh, the next. And uh, let's talk about, now the next thing I want to talk about as far as the moon goes in astrology, transit aspects to one's natal moon. They could be significant because it could have an impact on one's emotional state and how they feel when, when these transits take place. Now let's say, for example, that uh, transit Saturn makes an adverse aspect uh, to one's natal moon. This could be someone that might feel at the time, feel rather despondent and gloomy and, and really pessimistic and often see, might see during this transit the negative aspects or elements and things. Now let's say, and take another example, let's say transit Jupiter makes a sextile or trying to one's natal moon. This could be a time of very ebullient and uh, happy emotions and, and being very emotionally uh, exuberant and probably without going overboard and getting overexcited about things, but just being happy enough and feeling positive enough to be able to approach whatever need they need, the person needs to do with a lot of that positive feeling uh, and emotional energy. So anyway, uh, well, the next thing is, uh, also, um, it's important to look at uh, transits of the moon uh, to your chart uh, as well. And it could show where emotional energy and perhaps uh, and maybe some kind of emotional needs may be, may be directed at that time where they may be, where they may go. Uh, now, let's say, for example, that somebody has the transit moon in Scorpio in the third house. There might be an emotional need perhaps for investigation or some kind of uh, mystery solving or problem solving, perhaps with one's siblings if applicable, or in one's uh, neighborhood, doing things of that nature with uh, somebody, with people that are uh, neighbors to them. And this, and it could also be communication about Scorpio-like matters can be significant at that time as well. The person may be more of an emotional communicator at that time and also too that i mean the moon also since it represents the mother the mother could be more figure more prominently in uh activities in uh in one's uh neighborhood 
and and really in matters with communications uh, with the person being in Scorpio, they could be rather intense and, and provocative uh, as well. So anyway, well, also, uh, as far as uh, the, the, some other things about the moon, some talk about a couple phases. Now, let's talk. I want to talk about the transit new moon. Now, the transit new moon can be significant in astrology because it can signify uh, a new, uh, perhaps a new start in a, a, some kind of um, new endeavor, uh, embarking on a new project or endeavor. And also a full moon in astrology, on the other hand, can indicate the end or a culmination of something. It could be when someone becomes simply full or, or tired or exasperated of a situation in life, and it could reach a boiling point for that person. Now, a new moon in Taurus, for example, uh, this could be this could indicate perhaps someone uh, embarking on a new financial uh, endeavor. It could be starting something uh, Taurus related, I mean, such as banking or cultivating, doing something strongly connected I mean, with the earth, perhaps. Now, it could also, or, or starting getting some new values. Now, another example, uh, take the, let's say, we'll talk about a full moon in Scorpio. Now, let's say a full moon in Scorpio takes place. This could be the completion of something like uh, that might be Scorpio related, such as uh, some kind of astrological work, something connected with the occult, the supernatural, uh, locksmith work, forensics, investigation, uh, magic or alchemy, or something connected with psychology or psychiatry. Say if that was in the ninth house, it could be the end perhaps of a um, of, a, of perhaps something connected with higher education, a college course that might culminate or come to an end that might be Scorpio-like. So, well, the next thing is I want to talk about the moon in a progress chart. Now, the moon in a in, in a progress chart could show where the moon's energy may be directed at that time, but over a little longer period at, in contrast to a transit, because you look at a, a transit by house might be around two and a third days on average for for a moon transiting a house where you have on um, when you're talking about a progressed chart you're looking at a little longer time you're looking at maybe more like two and a, a third years um about so and let's say somebody in their progressed chart has the moon in virgo in that fifth house now this could be uh, someone at the time at, where this could this energy can manifest as an emotional need through extrapolation of data, perhaps connected with sports, because sports could be associated with the fifth house, such as fantasy football, and projecting stats can be a strong emotional need at the time, and just it could be general analytical, intellectual amusement and enjoyment could be something that um, that may. Uh, be taking place at the time for that person. Remember that the moon also can reflect the mother, so it might be the mother might be seen as more judgmental and critical at this time, but at the same time might be uh, might be exhibiting a need for enjoyment or some kind of intellectual analytical uh, amusement and enjoyment. So anyway, people. That'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for the moon in astrology. Stay tuned next time where I'll be talking about Mercury in astrology. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone because astrologically speaking the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one until next time people stay well